Hey guys, Bushcraft Family back again with another video. And I haven't done one of these in, in quite some time. Um, it's about the ports and about the supply chain. There has been a lot of reports going on about uh, um, when will the supply chain be fixed, um, when will we go back to normal, and, and all that funky, funky stuff. And we've got professors here and professors there that saying how to do this and how to do that. Um, and even the government has stepped in and uh, put their two cents in it and put uh, officials, uh, government uh, employees, as you you may, at these uh, at these ports. Um, I talked about this a, a while back. Uh, them actually taking over the Long Beach, uh, LA one. Lay hey, down, kitty. Um, well, that, that, that wouldn't have made anything any better. Um, and our fearless leader, uh, said that we wanted to make it the Long Beach and, and, LA port makes they're run 24 seven. Um, they were already running 24 <laughs> seven. That's the thing. Um, and, and there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, like, uh, strikes and talks and everything like this. Um, there's an incident in Seattle, the Seattle port up there that uh, the owners were sabotaging the talks with the unions and stuff like that. And that didn't make things go any smoother. So, like I said, the northern area right now is so close to a strike. And believe it or not, there we get a lot of, uh, a lot of products come in that area and, and go out. Um, but let's go ahead and, and switch over to the, um, other page here so we can take a look. As you can see here, um, this is a port of uh, Rottingham. It's one of the biggest there is. Um, let me go ahead and do a close up to this real quick. So you got, can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at. Um, as you see here, and this is the late, one of the latest pictures uh, of the ports here. And as you can see, these aisles, and they, they, they call them aisles, they are leased out to certain companies. Um, this one right here might be a Walmart or something like that. Not over there, but you kind of get the idea. And as you can see, a lot of these are stacked so high. Now, mind you, before this had started, they had these cranes. These are are cranes that will go in there and stack these, and they'll they'll pick up ones that are needed. Um, they come from the. Sh I, hopefully, you guys can see see my mouse here. Uh, these cranes right here will pick up a container and lower it down. And these guys right here are are drones. Actually, they're 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 not manned. And they take these guys and pull into here. And these cranes right here will actually pick these up and, and stack them where they need to be. Now, there used to be a st standard size of these cranes. Um, since since uh, the supply chain issues, you know, the sickness and everything, they've had to extend these cranes to go up higher because we are stacking these uh, containers so high that the old cranes couldn't maneuver anymore because there was no room to maneuver so they had to raise them up that's how bad things have gotten and they haven't gotten any better I mean we're still getting some supplies and everything out and whatnot but as you see over here, you, you see some empty ones right over right over in here. And maybe 
you unload one of these ships and maybe 10% of this ship would go in one of these aisles, if that. And then another 10% would go in another aisle and so forth. But the, the, the outer end of this, if you see over here, this is where the trucks and this is where the trains get loaded up over in here. So what would happen is that end of it would get backed up severely. And then a ship would come in here and, and dock and be ready to unload, but there's nowhere for them to put this because the trains and the trucks are just so backed up that they could they can't get that stuff that that um the containers out fast enough and then there's there's a section of this to where they would hurry up and, and let a bunch of trucks in to get all the these containers out what they would do they would put these in another warehouse uh close to the ports to where they would store these until they got other drivers, uh, long range drivers to take them where they needed to go. Uh, be it to a warehouse to where they would take them out, uh, the, the stock out of the containers and load up into trucks to, that would deliver them to stores and whatnot. So you, you kind of get the idea of this. Well, this is 2022 that uh, is almost over. And we are still looking like this. Nothing has improved. Um, we have improved of the number of ships that are setting in the bays waiting to get unloaded. And majority of that is because um, the scheduling system, There, uh, there's things like that. But... Um, say a ship leaves from China to come over here to unload their goods and they get here early. Well, that was the issue back then. Now, if they get here early, um, so they don't, instead of getting a fine, they go out in the outer regions of, of the bay and they turn off their transponders. A transponder is a thing that shows uh, radar and all this where the they are located at um, and believe it or not there is a lot of ships out there um, that are turning their transponders off until it's time for them to come into their spot in the, in the bay to be unloaded <coughs> excuse me any anyways this report talks about um, basic when, when the bottleneck first started, which was October 15, 2020. Um, and it talks about the issues of the sickness and everything like that. And we go back down here, and yeah, it's still bad, uh, basically. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you some more images. Um, this one here is a recent image of Savannah. Let's go ahead and zoom into this a little bit. As you can see, a lot of the, and Savannah is a very huge, um, port for this. And as you can see here are these aisles and it goes on and on. And this is where, where the boats come in and it, and it goes all the way down to one end to the other. And as you can see, this is not normal <laughs> over here. If you can see where my mouse is, this is a fully low would have been a fully loaded aisle to go out. And you see there, there, there are some that are just one deep and there are some that are three to four, uh, six deep. When I say deep, that means how high they're stacked. Um, but as you can see, there are some that are so stacked that they can't have one of these cranes on here anymore. They have to have the special cranes, the ones that are higher cranes. And you can see in the distance, these are all 
really high ones. And here's here's some of the high cranes over here. Um, and then we're going to go o over to, this is Long Beach one right here. Now, this is w where they unload some ships right here. These are all the cranes right here. And here are all the aisles. As you can see, majority of them are completely full. Um, and this is the rail system where they get loaded onto rail cars. As you can see, they're fully loaded. And this is the same thing over, over in here. This, again, is L.A. and Long Beach ports. Um, all this is connected. There, there's also another side of this the, the bay where they get unloaded over here on the right-hand side that I just didn't get in, in the image. And, again, these guys use drones. These are um, AI um, vehicles. They're, they're not manned. They work 24-7. Um, and they, they take these over here. These cranes unload them here. Um, and then these cranes pick them up. And as you can see here, remember when I was telling, every, telling you guys about uh, the cranes are... The, these aisles are getting filled so high that these cranes cannot maneuver anymore because they have nowhere else to go. Um, and they, they only have so much clearance to pick up um, a container. And that's never, that's never been an issue ever until now. And it, like I said, it's still bad. You may be going to the store and say, oh, we got all kinds of stuff at the store. The thing is, um, grocery stores only hold three days supply before the next truck comes in because they don't want to waste um, supplies on just setting on the shelves. So grocery stores only have three days supply. So if a storm happens or something, uh, everybody runs out and goes to the store. Boom, you're you're cleared out. You only have three days stuff. And if if they mess up an order in any any way at on anything, chicken, uh, beef, rice, beans, anything, you may not see nothing for a week to two weeks. And this is why the supply chain is still broken and it's still bad. Um, and you get all these professors saying, well, this is how you fix it. And this is how you fix it. And everybody has a different idea. And so far, nobody's came up with the, the magic plan. Um, there are, like I said, at, at, at a lot of these, uh, ports, they're extending their cranes higher and higher to accommodate f for uh, the cargo coming in. And if, if you guys have been watching some of these that I've done in the past, they have, um, I've, I've done videos about the ports finding these companies when they bring in and, and set these things in the aisles. If they're, if they're here for more than uh, a couple days, they start fining them a hundred dollars. I think it's up to two hundred dollars a day, day now. A two hundred dollars a day for each and every one of these that are set in here. What's that mean? That means me, me, and you will be paying that when you go to the grocery store, and that's one of the reasons why our our inch an inflation is is so bad. Because this supply chain issue is raising prices every day. Every time we go to the port and see this mess, this is costing us money. It's not costing them money because they, they'll they put that money onto us. It's just the way it's always been. And until um, we get this fixed... It's, it's going to continue to keep rising and our inflation and all this stuff is just going to get worse. Um, I hope this kind of explains a little bit how, um, how, how this works and whatnot. I gave you um, three different options of ports.
and it was really hard to find recent fold, fo photos of these ports because um, a lot of them don't like to put that information out there. They don't want people seeing how bad it really is. But anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, please like, share, comment, all that stuff because it really does help. And make sure you go check out uh, my Bushcrafty channel. It's got a lot of other content that I don't put over on here. Until next time, God bless.